Hi there. Now it's been a while since I recorded one of these videos. It's uh, really good to be back. I've been very busy in my life organizing the next place we live and selling my last home and a lot of other things as well. And um, I've been watching the, the world just move so fast over these last many weeks since I recorded the previous video. And I've had so many times when I wanted to sit down but just didn't have the space for it. You know, things are, things are moving at a very a breakneck pace right now. And it seems like the awakening process of humanity is really accelerating. More and more people are becoming aware of the level of corruption and secrecy and, pardon the French, bullshit that is being pushed upon us by our so-called authority figures, the pharmaceutical companies, the scientists, you know, all of our institutions, all of our authorities are basically, they're breaking down and turning out to not be reliable anymore. And so this is, this is really unprecedented in my lifetime, but I think in, in the world in general, that we are in the middle of a breakdown of the structures of our society. The financial markets, I'm sure you have felt the inflation on your wallet, you know, there's less money there for a lot of you guys now. And we're all wondering where to place our money to hedge against inflation. And why is it that everything is so damn chaotic? Well, I think let's go back to something that Robert Moore talked about in his book, King, War, and Magician, Lover, Archetypes of the Mature Masculine. Many of you have been watching the video where I did the expose of the true story about his death with his niece. And uh, I'm glad to see that, yeah, this, the news, the truth of that story is coming out. And if you haven't seen it already, then make sure to, I'll put a link on, on the video here so that you can go there. Uh, so I, I wanna pay some more homage to, to Robert Moore by bringing in some of these important terms. And it's, it's the monster boy that I want to talk about today, but I also want to add the monster girl because certainly women have exactly the same capacity for immaturity and for cruelty as men have. And popular as that is from the perspective of contemporary culture, but this is an important insight to have. So not as to become some sort of prince-like, naive, pink, rosy, you know, boy that just thinks that women are infallible creatures because we are equally messed up and equally fantastic, right? But how, how is it that this, this really good world of ours can be pulled apart into complete chaos in such little time? must have something to do with poor leadership and must have something to do with a lot of people not able to detach from an obedience or a codependent relationship with these authorities. It must be something like that, I think. And I've already on this channel been criticizing leaders such as the, the boy Trudeau, the boy monster Trudeau, who's becoming a more and more legitimate tyrant for every passing day. And I'm very happy personally, just because I don't like tyrants very much, to see that Canadians are really starting to take him down. I see videos of people confronting him as a traitor and as a tyrant, well, around his public appearances in, in Canada. But of course, we have immature leaders all, all over the place. and. Did we have more mature leaders back in the days yet? Well, actually, I think we did. But that's a personal belief of mine based on my reading on history. But, but, but what, what are these boy tyrants, these monster boys, as Robert Moore called them? Well, they're males or females that have not been initiated in, into some kind of mature service to the community, to the nation, to humanity, to the planet. And so instead of being in a relationship of humility, in a way prostrating myself like to the people 
that I'm chosen to serve. Ho hopefully in legitimate ways, but maybe in less legitimate ways. Um, to realize that ultimately it's those that I serve that are my priority as a leader. These people don't understand this because the monster boy thinks that his leadership is about him and people adoring him and him being gratified. The monster boy is a narcissist. He is often a sociopath or even a psychopath, which is definitely the case with Justin Trudeau. He's a narcissistic psychopath. No question. No question. And many of our other world leaders are as well. It's about them. The boy has made, the boy monster, the monster boy, has made it all about his ego. And he has not received a genuine initiation into the king, by the king, into sovereignty. He doesn't know that there are forces greater than him. That he is merely for a moment, a steward of the sovereign principle, the king archetype. I'm glad to see that the, the heads of many leaders are rolling now. Boris Johnson, Draghi's head in Italy seems to be rolling. Um, there's an Estonian leader now. I don't remember her name because I don't know her well. But I just assume, even without having researched her, that she is one of Klaus Schwab's women. And then she is corrupted as well. Uh, in Sri Lanka, of course, we see that the, the people have taken control because their leaders weren't serving them. They were serving their own interests and the, the kind of corrupt brotherhood that they had been initiated into by virtue of organizations like the World Economic Forum and the Bilderberg Group and the Freemasons and whatnot. All of these organizations are organizations, as, at least as far as I can tell, of monster boys and monster girls that don't have any dialogue with the people about what they want but they merely assume that they know best because, you know, they are the leaders. They identify with being the leaders. So clearly they are superior beings, superior human beings. At least it appears to me like they perceive themselves as such. And from their high and mighty dark thrones, they are pushing the buttons and pulling the levers and cords, whatever programming the algorithms that we are going to be governed by. And more and more of you are starting to realize that the choices that they make truly are not in our best interest. They are in the interests of the very leaders that are congregating in Davos and Sun Valley and New York and DC and wherever else it is. They lack initiation into a true principle of leadership, of being the king, of being a representative of the king archetype. Now, over the last couple of days, I, I have taken a bit of interest in, in the Freemasons. And there seems to be so much credible evidence that at the highest level of Freemasonry, you're being initiated into Lucifer worship. And that prior to that, it's just, a, it's just a feeding channels, filtering out the people who are not able to, to stand for this, this kind of dark agenda. And until you have the, 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 the elite, malevolent monster boys and girls at the top. And I'm mentioning this 
you know, I, I don't know how much of this is mere conspiracy theory and how much is it, of it is real, but by now I have come to see, as you probably have as well, that most conspiracy theories are actually true. I'm not a flat earther, <laughs> I can guarantee you that, so I'm not that one, but most of them are actually true. And they've probably been labeled as such to neutralize them in the eyes of these monster boy and monster girl leaders. And so mentioning this, this principle of Lucifer worship, because Lucifer, of course, is at the root of it really an archetype. Well, I actually think it's a, it's a real consciousness as well, a real dark consciousness. But it's, it's an archetype of adolescence and an adolescent rebellion against daddy. Maybe an unusual way of looking at it, but Lucifer wanted to be better than daddy. He wanted to be brighter than daddy. And as such, he's just like any teenage rebellion, grandiose person. And then when you have world leaders that are aspiring to be in worship of this, you're aspiring to be in worship of a, a cruel adolescent mindset. It's a worship of being immature, of being a monster boy or monster girl. And regardless of whether this is indeed true, that on the 33rd level of Freemasonry, you are initiated into Lucifer worship. I mean, it seems pretty credible because so many of the leaders of uh, Freemasons have been writing books about Lucifer being the Lord of this earth and being the light bringer and all. Well, it's all over the place. Somehow it's been undermined by, you know, authoritarian <laughs> uh, truth, author authorities on truth. But you know how credible they are by now. So I'm, I'm leaning towards this being real and I'm leaning then towards these people actually being in a deep worship of a false initiation into an anti-maturity. An anti-maturity, like a rebellious mindset and then being groomed into adolescent rebellion by dark kings such as Klaus Schwab and, you know, whatever superiors that he has. I think one of the most key insights in order to thrive, or at least survive, through this time that we're in, is the reality of evil. Because if you don't see that evil is real, then you're going to be very naive. And then what I see in a lot of people that I care about is that then you're not able to identify correctly that our leaders are adolescent narcissistic psychopaths. You're not able to do that because you're depending on them. Uh, I'm not gonna make it too political. Of course, there are monster boys and monster girls on both sides of the political spectrum, I assure you. But at the end of the day, the heartbreaking realization is that most of our leaders are adolescent people who have not learned to be in service to a greater principle than themselves. And they're hiding behind narratives of being philanthropists or protecting democracy or whatever it might be. But this is not reality. This is just narrative. And the reality is playing out right in front of our very eyes. And it isn't pretty. And so thinking back to Robert Moore, I sometimes wonder if the way that he died had some connection to the insights that he had. Of course, that is a bit conspiratorial. I don't know. I don't know. But the insights that he carried were dangerous to the dark leadership, the dark adolescent immature and malevolent leadership that we have in this world, in this old world that is falling apart. And he saw that correctly. 
And, uh, and our work is to find, well, at, at least as far as I'm concerned, is to, to really de decouple ourselves from dependency to these people and start building new structures, new systems that actually aspire to maturity. Because the problem with adolescents, the problem with monster boy and monster girl leaders is that they prey on innocence. They prey on children. Because they, adolescents, don't want kids around. It's something that they hate because they're trying to not be children. But adults protect children. And I yearn for a world in which our leaders are true adults. And I hope that you and I and many with us can inspire to at least talk about this vision, but hopefully also start to embody some of these principles of leadership ourselves. It ain't easy. Leadership is really damn hard. And I know that from experience, and I also don't know a hell of a lot of really amazing leaders. I know a few. I know a few. And I, I, I treasure them deeply. Maybe I'll talk more about them in the future. But this is what I hope that we can embody together and start building the better world. But now, as we see the old one break apart, just keep this in mind. The legacy of Robert Moore and his insights about being a, rob uh, about being a monster boy or monster girl. The immature being that hasn't been initiated into true service and places himself or herself over everything. It's time to let that go, I think. So thank you for being with me here today. I look forward to being with you again soon. And um, have a great day and catch you in a bit.